Here we have the new cavalry molds from the Seven Years War range. They are Austrian cuirassiers, painted here as the 16th Cuirassiers Regiment. There are four different figures, however. The same horse is used for each of them. So you only need one mold for the horse and two molds for the different riders. Here we have the horse mold. It is a one figure mold. We have cut two vents into this mold. Here and here. These are the two rider molds, each containing two riders per mold, totaling four riders. We supply you with two PTFE rods to create the hole in the body. It is important that you put them in correctly so you get the perfect hole so that the heads can be fitted to the body. First, apply the release agent evenly all over both sides of your chosen mold. After you finish, clap a few times both halves together to dislodge excess powder. Don't forget to add the PTFE rods to the neck areas of your soldiers' bodies. These allow holes for inserting the head rods later. Now assemble both halves together. Do that when the mold is flat to make sure you have it properly connected. Now add the two support boards. These spread the pressure of the clamps more evenly across the mold surface. Next add your clamps. We are going to use four rather than the usual two for this mold as it has sidebars in it which can cause flashing otherwise. Flashing is a metal leak where the mold is not sufficiently closed. We are using our solder pot here and our ladle was resting in it to keep it from prematurely cooling the liquid. Push away any dross on the surface first and scoop up clean metal. Bring the ladle over to the mold, rest it on the edge and pour in a steady flow until the hole is full. Gently tap the mold a little to settle the metal. Repeat with the second hole, rest it on the edge and pour until full and then tap the mold a little. Leave that for about five minutes. Next, we will do the horse mold. Apply the release agent powder all over the mold. I added an air vent near the base to help fill out the casting better. Always cut the vent towards the top of the mold to prevent leaks. Clap both sides together again and then assemble it. Apply the support boards again. Apply your clamps. Again we are using more than two for this mold as the horse needs more metal than normal and that requires more support. Scoop more metal this time and pour it right up to the top of the hole. Leave it cool for 5 minutes. Now back to your first mold. It has cooled enough to start opening it. Take the clamps and support boards off carefully. Do not touch the metal yet as it will still be quite warm. Next slowly open the mold. Bend the rubber a little if need be to reveal the casting inside. You can also open the horse mold the same way. Do not bend the figure as it is still warm and somewhat fragile. Next remove the in gates with our super snipper. Cut off the heads, arms, weapons and body from the larger in gate. The in gate and any other waste parts can then go back into the solder pot basin for reuse. Take out the PTFE rod from the body section and keep it safe for reuse. 
you can see the hole it's left behind in the body of the soldier. Remove any small flashing that might be on the head and then insert it into the body to test its length. Trim the neck pole if too long. Now prepare to glue the figure together. Our gel glue is perfect for assembling small metal parts like this. You will need to hold it carefully in place for about 5 minutes. Use the super snipper to cleanly cut the ingate off the horse's base. It should leave a smooth finish. Apply plenty of glue to the gap where the saddle would be on the horse's body. Add it to all three sides. Next, slide the rider and saddle into the slot and make sure it fits as snugly as possible. You may need a little filler to remove any small gaps. Hold the figure together for about another 5-6 to six minutes to allow time for the glue to dry. After all this, you can prime the metal figure as usual and paint it. We recommend acrylic paints for this task. Now he is ready to signal a charge.